Was Gary Payton II the most undervalued player on the recent Golden State Warrior squad? That is certainly one way of looking at it. After all, there are many on the squad right now who are downright furious that the owner couldn't find a way to make GP2 a part of the squad again after they had worked so hard to try and get him the first time, and it paid off big. They're the NBA champs, but now they've lost one of their key role players that helped them win the title this past season. Yes, you could argue that always happens, but the story behind Gary Payton II makes it all the sadder that he didn't get to reign with the team he won gold with when he was truly undervalued. Just before last season arrived, one of the most important role players on a club desperate to return to its dynastic reign and the son of the legendary Seattle Supersonics guard Gary Payton was preparing to apply for a desk job in the team's video department. Told you his path wasn't what you'd expect. Gary Payton II has had a basketball career full of rejection. He has been cut from four teams in six years and spent five years toiling in the NBA's G League. And he'd just been cut again. Peyton knew there was an opening in the Golden State Warriors video coordination department, so he approached assistant coach Jamal Mamalila. It was an opportunity, he thought, to still contribute and participate. I was dead serious, Peyton says. If I get cut, I'm going to audition for that job. I was just trying to stay around. I'd still be around the game, I could still help, travel, whatnot and then figure it out from there. But Malali Lala had other plans. I just talked to him about the criteria for the video room. A willing learner, someone who can get on the court still and play, whatever. And he's like, I'll do that, Malali Law says. And I'm like, Gary, I'm not letting you do that. There is no chance in the world you are going to do that. You're playing for this team. Peyton was ready to do what he'd always done, adapt. After nearly two decades of learning to adapt in the face of adversity, Peyton was signed to Golden State's 15th and final roster spot four days after his conversation with Malali Law. And to be clear, it wasn't just one person asking for him to get that spot. Others on the Warriors wanted him there as well, and it was a big deal for him, especially after all the struggles he had gone through in his life to get to where he is now, including wondering if he wanted to actually play basketball like his father given all the pressures that were already on him. Getting into the game. I wanted to get away from the sport because of who my dad is, living up to the hype whatever, Peyton says. I just didn't want to deal with it. But by middle school, Peyton decided to give it a try. He was very lackadaisical, his mother Monique says. I'm like, dude, we're dogs on the court. You're either in or you're out. Are you playing or are you playing? Are you serious? When Gary was a junior in high school, he decided to meet with Daryl Jordan a family friend and basketball coach who was working with Julian in the AAU circuit. It was with Jordan that Gary's footwork and other fundamentals of the game started to improve. How he got to the team, the team he needed to be on. Among Adam DeSottle's responsibilities as an assistant coach at West Wind Preparatory Academy in Phoenix was helping players find spots at the next level. In September 2011, that meant posting on Blogspot, where he published scouting reports, one of which included a proclamation. DeSottles would be surprised if this particular West Wind player was not named an all-league defensive player at least once in his collegiate career. When he talked to college coaches about this player, a defense-first, jump-out-of-the-gym combo guard, he could sense their hesitation. He didn't understand how anybody could meet the kid and not like him. Convincing the coaches to make the trip was like pulling teeth. To this day, DeSottles cannot explain why there was such little interest in Gary Payton II. You'd think the son of a Hall of Famer would be overhyped, not under-recruited. I couldn't even get the big sky to come and look at Gary, DeSoto said. His name's Gary Payton and he's athletic. So one, that means I'm a terrible salesperson, but two, he wasn't really somebody that people took that seriously. Payton was 19 when he got to Salt Lake Community College, 23 when he went undrafted out of Oregon State, and 29 when his one-year contract with the Golden State Warriors started. This past Christmas, Peyton started in the marquee game. When Devin Booker neglected to box him out, he soared to the rim for a powerful putback. The kind of play that looks a thousand times more impressive when the guy making it is only six foot three. In the afterglow of the Golden State's victory, Andy Liu, co-host of Light Years, a long-running Warriors podcast, changed his Twitter display name to Gary Peyton II Stan Account. It's just an unforgettable season, Peyton said on January 10th the day he officially kept his spot, just before the team's plane departed for Memphis. My first locked-in season, guaranteed, and with this team, it's special guys on this team.
making his name. Peyton has seen the Chase Crowd Center give him a standing ovation and heard it chant his name. He has harassed opposing stars from Chris Paul to Nikola Jokic, won a jump ball against the 6'11 Jonas Valanciunas, dunked so hard he got headbutted and earned a new nickname. Young Glove is Peyton approved, as are The Thief and GP2. He's little Gary to family, but don't even think about calling him the mitten. He's hard to define, so the things he does on the court have to be pretty special, Golden State assistant coach Ron Adams said. And he's carved out this niche that works for him and is extremely helpful to a team. Peyton is proud of the fact that he broke out so close to turning 30. There is not an exact age when executives stop seeing you as a prospect, but it happens. They definitely look for younger guys to breed and make them their future, he said. But if you think about it, I didn't really start playing basketball until my senior year of high school, so I don't really have that much wear and tear on me. I'm pretty athletic still. I can still move pretty quick. By his own admission, Gary Payton II has said that he is a late bloomer, and that probably led to why people weren't willing to take a chance on him, despite being the son of The Glove, a legendary NBA player who went up against Jordan and others during his time in the league. But now, he's making his own name. And that leads up to the great irony of his career once again. Undervalued again? There is absolutely no doubt in anyone's mind that Gary Payton II was vital to the Golden State Warriors winning the NBA title this year. His work on both sides of the ball in both the regular season and the postseason and the NBA Finals against the Boston Celtics were vital. There was even a point when he was injured in the playoffs and many wondered if they'd suffer without him. That's how important he was to this squad. And yet, not long after the finals happened, Gary Payton's deal with the Warriors was up. They could have resigned him, but they chose not to. Thus, in July, he made a deal with the Portland Trailblazers, and now he's going to be a guard for them. When this happened, many in the Warriors locker room were stunned. Some straight up noted how disappointed they were in the owner of the team for not keeping him. Yes, there was the NBA tax to contend with, but Given they had just won a title and were easily contenders for another, their franchise definitely had money to spare, or money they could easily make up in the upcoming season depending on how far they went in the playoffs. So, was he undervalued again? Yeah, he honestly was. Part of it wasn't mean-spirited though, we'll be fair on that. But if nothing else, he did get a good deal with Portland, and if he plays well there, another good deal could be awaiting. So, what do you think? What do you think about Gary Payton II and how he went from undesirable to an NBA champion with a team that appreciated his value? Until it came time to pay him more for his services. Do you think the Warriors will regret letting him go? Or will they overcome like they always seem to in order to make things work and go for back-to-back -back titles? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time on the channel.